Now, before we start, I am going to acknowledge the country on which we are meeting today. So we're from all over the world. So wherever you are meeting, um, please feel free to pop your acknowledgement of country in into the chat message if you feel comfortable with that. I'm here um, on the central coast of New South Wales and I pay um, my respects and acknowledge the traditional um, first peoples of this land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to everyone joining us here today. Your, your fish parcels would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, your, your guess is as good as mine. I am my best efforts at en papillot, um, but it's French uh, for basically a, a baked parcel. So it's just like, um, I think papi, papi means paper in French. And then so to wrap with paper is the, the actual meaning. Um, but I'm not a French uh, expert by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but good morning, everyone. <laughs> I actually had the definition in the in the booking sheet, which I'm going to to pull up now that I pulled off one of our um, online databases. I'm just going to find it, um, and I thought that it meant butterfly, but I'm not oh, quite sure about that. That makes sense because I'm I'm I'll show you guys why in a second. <laughs> I, th um, I thought that, that makes it, more sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure butterfly comes up in there. Morning, Midori. Yeah, uh, because the idea is to cut the paper as though you, it would look like a butterfly. And I'll show you guys to start actually, since we're on the topic. But okay. yeah, go ahead and pull up that um, that uh, definition. It. It's pronounced N Papi Yot. Yep. Yot. E E N P A P E E Y A W T. Mm -hmm. And it means cooking, cooked in a paper wrapper. And the word mm -hmm. um, papillot comes from the French word for butterfly papillon. And the paper is, in fact, a butterfly shaped before folding. How cool is that? We're both right. It does mean that <laughs> in a baking paper, but it also comes from uh, butterfly, which makes sense, uh, which is awesome. Thank you, for, thank you for looking that up for us, Kathy. That's all right. Now you mentioned some recipes that you were going to share. Did you want to go ahead and do that first or do you want to do? Okay. Like well, what I can do is I've actually popped, I took some photos of the recipes. So I, I did raid the library. So this one was, I couldn't believe my luck. I'm at one of our smallest branches ever with the smallest collection. And there was this book and it's cook fast, eat well, mm. five ingredients, 10 minutes, 160 recipes. But what it had in there was... It's actually this, um, that's the variations, but it's got the actual recipe in there. <gasps> the original M. Populo. And then variation. So oh, obviously you you're go. doing a variation. So if you're on the yeah. central post, you know, you might like to, to borrow this one. Yeah. I mean, when I first started playing around with this, so I think the original is, usually, it's a French style, which means lots of butter and I forget what fish and a couple of other things, usually salmon. Um, and the one I, I, so I experimented, I did a Thai version. I did a Asian version, which we'll go through today. I did a Japanese version with miso. Uh, so you can pretty much do anything you want. In fact, the way that I recommend this uh, recipe is done is to actually bake just the fish and the vegetables in the paper. And then while it's baking to prepare the sauce. So you can pretty much do any sauce because um, the fish, depending on which fish you use, and I've given some options, but it kind of becomes a sponge for whatever sauce you, you put on top of it. So I like the idea of not trying to put the sauce into the paper bag and then bake it because it could get messy as well. So, and that also means you can prepare your sauce in advance and just have that ready to go on top of the fish once you've baked it. So it's really clean eating, which is why I like the book you found, Kathy, because it's, it's, it really is. It's, I mean, veggies and fish. We'll quickly do what, what uh, Kathy was just describing before, which is to make the baking paper, uh, which is in the shape of a butterfly. So, me... so um, what I thought here is basically just a baking sheet folded in half, as you can see. Maybe not so clearly, but it is baking sheet folded in half. <laughs> um, and so the reason you fold it in half is because you're meant to then just take, um, I'm using a mock pen, you can use pen, um, and you're meant to do, a, it's a heart shape that you'll do a half heart shape that you do to, it's, it's just optimized to 
fold the, the fish parcel from a, an angle, angular perspective, um, as opposed to trying to just crumple all the corners around while it's in a square um, cut. So we'll, we'll, I'll do that now really quickly, just so you know what I mean. So it's really just an upside down heart shape like that. Um, nothing too fancy. That then allows us to fold around the corners later on. And, um, and then when, when I finish, it'll look like a butterfly basically when I cut it open. So I'll quickly just do that for you guys today. So it's just really going along the black lines. And then I'm just gonna go off in the corner so I don't have to worry about him. And then going back from here as well. I feel like I should have bought my baking paper up here. <laughs> <laughs> you can be doing M Papilo for days. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit of arts and crafts, which I like. I actually do enjoy um, mixing in with cooking. Uh, and just around the corner. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and even with the, with the folding, it takes a little bit of practice. And I'll walk you guys through that a little bit later on. But having said all that, we have a butterfly or sweetheart or butterfly shape. And that's the reason it's called N Populo. So hopefully you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we have today. And that's what we're gonna be wrapping our uh, fish par parcels in. Um, so we'll go through that in a second. Now, um, I have the, I know no one's cooking with me today, um, but I have the oven on already. And that's at 200 degrees at, for a convection or traditional uh, oven bake. So not, um, What's the other one? Um, the, the one with the for, uh, forced fan. So I'm not using forced fan because that'll dry out the fish. I'm just using regular uh, oven. So 200 degrees, just as you can see in the background, it's, it's, it's on. So what we'll do is we'll actually just get the fish parcels put together since I've got this camera view. So what I'm doing today is I'm doing um, baby bok choy at the bottom. As you can see, I've just, they were basically whole bok choy, the little baby ones, and I've just sliced them up in half and opened them up. They become a nice little resting ground for the fish to sit on. And then I've just got my fish as well um, that I have sliced up. So I'm actually, I've actually got half a kilo of fish. Uh, so I'm gonna, I, I think the recipe I wrote was for 250 grams. Uh, I think about 125. So the recipe that I wrote out should give you two parcels basically um, for um, a, a quarter of a kilo of um, fish. Because anything more than that, uh, the parcel will become really difficult to fold and then it'll also start to open up which defeats the purpose of trying to wrap it up. So itty bitty parcels basically is what we're looking at uh, doing today. And so that's it. These are the three things. I've just got some sliced chili here as well. Um, Kathy, were you going to say something? What kind of fish are you using? Today I'm using uh, pink ling or rock ling, which is, I think, more of an Australian style fish. Um, you can also use um, barramundi. Barramundi is actually really nice in this one. Uh, you could also use baza. Um, you could use, I wouldn't recommend um, a blue uh, hoki or blue grenadier because it uh, when, when you cook that fish, it kind of comes apart. But if you like it and, and you enjoy eating it, then I think use it. Um, they all have different uh, baking uh, times because they're different types of fish. And the reason I'm using rockling is because it bakes pretty fast. It, it pretty much gets done in about 15, 15 minutes max, um, which will fit within our window today. Barramundi is probably up there as well, 15 to 18 minutes. The rest start to take a little bit longer. Um, I think blue grenadier takes about 35 minutes. Baza takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So I'm just, I was going with the quickest fish <laughs> to cook. Uh, so that's what I'm using. But let me get going with these guys. I've just got one guy here. He's gonna sit sort of parallel to the length of it. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'd actually do it this way um, so that you can see the line around it. Um, so yeah, so one big piece there. And I've got 125 grams of um, fish. So that one's uh, ruffling, just fold it over. Oh, actually I might put some, and this is optional. Um, I'm gonna put some chilies cause I like me some chilies. I might actually put underneath the fish so it gets into um, the flavor. You can take out the seeds if you, if you don't like them or, or can't handle the heat or skip it all together. I just like putting it in the oven cause it really starts to get into the, the sort of the fish and, and the veggie in terms of the flavor and the, and it also baking it actually kills the um, the smell like the heat of the chili as well. So um, that that helps rather than using it as a garnish later on. 
So yeah, so I am going to actually flip this this way now because I'm used to folding it this way. And we are going to go ahead and just, you guys should be able to see that. So I've just got the corner here at the top of the heart and I'm just going to fold kind of in half. So that's probably about three inches and then halfway through that fold again, halfway through that fold again. This is why this is not good for service, Kathy, because this takes time. <laughs> halfway through that fold again, go ahead. It's very delicate, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is for mindful cooking for a couple of people. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's actually a good point. It really starts to slow things down. And um, I mean, you can actually prepare this in advance. If you're someone that really loves fish, fish usually lasts a couple of days in the fridge tops. You can throw some uh, lemon juice or vinegar in it just to kind of uh, give it a bit of uh, shelf life. Um, and then you can have it ready to go for the whole family, even if you do it on Sunday, say for Monday night dinner, for example. Um, so it's, it's really quick because we do this sauce for it separately. So you can just have these parcels, chuck them in the oven as soon as you're home and then head straight into um, either grab the, the sauce that you would have pre-made um, or make the sauce while it bakes because it bakes for a very quick period of time. And yeah, all of a sudden you've got dinner ready to go and quiet kids because they're eating and it's healthy. So yeah, so there you go. That's a little unpopular. I've just twisted it up there at the end so that it doesn't uh, open up. There you go. So that's a little guy um, ready to go into the oven. Now um, I'm gonna quickly do the rest and then we will put them in the oven and then we'll make the sauce. Voila, in the spirit of, <laughs> of being French today. Um, yeah, so they're gonna go in the oven. These guys, 15 to 18 minutes tops because they're uh, pink link or rock link. Um, but yes, like I said before, and maybe I can share that, that at the end, if you're using different types of fish, you need to be mindful. Cause when I first made this with pink ling, um, I, I baked it for too long and my partner was like, this is really dry. <laughs> <laughs> and so you think fish, you know, won't, it can't overcook, but it can, it, it ends up becoming very dry. So you don't want that to happen, which is, which kills the, the whole, um, the beauty of actually enjoying the fish. But yes, yeah, so you want to make sure you're following the baking duration for the fish and temperatures as well in some case. So I'm just going to put this in now. So I'm going to quickly show you guys, I might switch camera actually, because you, so that, that's all the stuff that's going to go into the sauce that I'm going to make while the fish bakes. Um, but I'll quickly switch cameras so you can see it up close. There we go. So we're going to start with sesame oil. So this is just as per the recipe that um, you've sent out. I've just upped the quantities here because I'm doing some noodles as well. So I wanted to double up so I had enough sauce for the fish and then left over to do the noodles. So I've got sesame oil, then I've got soy sauce. Um, I'm using light soy sauce, uh, which is basically just a color. Thing. So it's it's basically got less color and Chinese cooking light soy sauce is often used uh, more for stir fries and and those sorts of things. Um, yes, and, and, and sauces as well, because it there's a dark uh, uh, soy sauce, which is actually it's used speci specifically to make something dark like there's chickens, uh, soy chicken that you have and you'd use dark instead of light. So I'm actually using light today. If you've got regular kind, that's fine. Just know that it might make your dish slightly darker than what it'll look like today, which is just a aesthetic thing. It'll taste just the same. As I mentioned, we've got some wine. So this is Xiaoxing, which is Chinese rice wine. Uh, it's the kind that's as you can tell, it looks like cooking sherry. Um, so if you don't have Xiaoxing, just use cooking sherry, it'll, it'll be just fine. What we want is just that sort of alcohol to brighten up um, the palate a little bit. Uh, what we have here as well is fish sauce. Now, traditionally, when you steam this, so the Asian way of making this is to steam this in, in the oven, sorry, in, the ste in a steamer. And what will happen is they throw a bunch of ginger and scallions and they just steam the whole fish. And, and fish sauce, like 
broth would come out of it. And so whilst that's happening, they'd be making the sauce on the side and they'd take some of that fish broth out. Now we don't have that luxury because they're in the oven and they're all parceled up nice and pretty. So I've just, I'm just adding fish sauce. If you don't like fish sauce or you don't like that fishiness, you can skip it, totally fine. I like it. <laughs> I think it adds that umami flavor and you can always just go less uh, than the quantity I've put in if you want just a drop or two. Then we've got our aromatics. We've got ginger and we've got garlic. Now the ginger I've cut into little matchstick sizes because that's traditionally how it's done for Asian style uh, steamed fish. So I was just trying to stay true to that uh, theme. And then I've got ginger as well minced up. Um, and then finally sugar in the middle. And I've used dark sugar because again, it gives a little bit of depth. So we're gonna make this uh, sauce really quickly while the fish is baking. So I've just got my little stove going with um, high heat. I'm just trying to get the pot hot. I'm gonna go in with sesame oil first just to get that um, heat it up. And then the first thing that goes in is ginger. So I, I wanna fry the ginger without burning it. I wanna pull out of the ginger some of the, the gingerness. <laughs> They've just got a lot of um, beautiful oils in there. And when you fry ginger, it actually flavors the oil. So you get sesame ginger oil, which I really like. Um, and then we'll go in with the garlic to kind of just cook all that stuff up and then we'll finish off with the remaining sauces and sugar at the end. Um, yeah, so we'll start with the oil since this is getting warm. So as I said, I'm not trying to cook these guys to death. I just wanna cook them enough uh, for the ginger uh, flavor to come out of it. So now it's starting to turn golden brown. Um, Oh, sorry, golden-ish. Um, even at that point, it's good because if I leave that in longer, it's going to burn while I cook the ginger, uh, the garlic. So that's going in now as well. It smells really nice in here. <laughs> I wish we could uh, do a smell of vision situation, but we can't. Uh, I'm sure someone's working on it in the tech field as <laughs> we speak. Sure, yeah. Absolutely right. Um, so that's going to quickly come to, because I've minced up that garlic so it doesn't need a lot of time. Uh, the thing I'm going to go in with next actually is going to be the Shaoxing, the rice wine. And that's just going to change again because I've just mixed alcohol with oil, which I love. I love the science of this all. So it's just going to behave quite differently and slow down the cooking. And so you're using rice wine. Can you use just a regular white wine in that? I don't see why not. I just wouldn't use any, like I wouldn't use a Chardonnay or like a very plain white wine, because otherwise it'll lend its flavor to the dish. This is why cooking sherry is probably the best option, um, or just sherry, because <laughs> it's got that sort of, um, it doesn't have like the fruity um, and nutty flavor of wine that could get in the way. Now, that said, if you really love that wine and don't mind it coming to the fish party, go for it. Uh, no reason why you shouldn't. So um, fish sauce has to go in as well. So that's just popped in there. I guess that's the beauty of this recipe is you really make it however you prefer however you like. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And after making it a couple of times, you'll figure out, no, I don't want that much soy sauce. I don't want it to be that salty or I actually need a little bit more um, wine because I really like that flavor in there, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not even adding salt to this because I'll put soy sauce um, in and that's going to do a fantastic job of uh, seasoning it. And then I'll just add, and that just went in. And the last thing to add is gonna be the sugar. So it doesn't need a long time to cook. I just bring it up to the simmer and then it's done. Um, but we'll let that come to a boil. I'm actually gonna, this is not a salt, <laughs> salt grinder. This is actually a white pepper grinder <laughs> and it's how I distinguish between a black pepper grinder. So I'm actually just gonna go in with white pepper. This is completely optional. I did not put this in the menu, uh, in the recipe, <laughs> not the menu. Um, I prefer it. It's it's very it's a very Asian flavor. Uh, it lends no heat at all. Um, but yes, I really like the flavor it it uh, lends to the fish. So I've just gone in with a couple of grinds, and that's plenty. So yeah, just gonna let that come up to a heat, and throw the sugar in so that it can melt, and then it's ready. So that's Before it. The fish. That's it, that's the sauce that's ready to go. And I've just put it in a little pot. So I'm gonna go in with the sugar now and then switch off the heat and it's done. So you Super don't bad. need to boil it for any length of time. It's just literally just 
a quick bring to the boil and it's done. Yeah, so the, the uh, most, the thing good. that needed to be cooked most were the aromatics, the ginger, the garlic, that got done at the start with the oil. And then the rest of it is just adding on flavor. So the fish sauce was probably the one that needed heat. Otherwise it can be still quite pungent. If you add fish sauce, you'll notice as soon as you cook it, it doesn't smell as pungent as it does when it's raw because the heat actually takes that smell away. So those two things um, probably are what needed the heat. The rest are just, you could just whisk it into, if you weren't using those things, you could just whisk it and, and you'd be ready to go from a sauce perspective. So uh, the other thing it does because soy sauce and alcohol from the wine and sesame oil, they're all things that are, they don't mix. <laughs> so the heat actually allows them to, to um, come together properly. Um, otherwise they would continue to stay separated unless you really went at it <laughs> and did a gym workout with your hand. <laughs> but yeah, that's our sauce. All right, so I've got noodles that I'm just gonna pop into this bowl. Um, I'm gonna need to reserve some of that sauce for the fish, but I just thought I'd quickly show you guys, if you didn't feel like fish, or don't eat fish, this is a different way to do something else with the sauce that we just made. So in you go. And a little bit more. And that should be enough for now, otherwise it's gonna fill up too much. We'll put him aside. All right, I'm gonna get my soup ladle and my mega chopsticks. So I'm gonna go in with some extra spring onions. So these guys are the dark side of the green scallions, not the white side. I think they go well in this, um, this kind of a dish with noodles. So I'm just gonna maybe do it that way. Go in with two scoops and then I think that's all I can afford. Gotta budget the rest of the fish. Um, <laughs> and just really kind of go in there with this noodles. Hopefully you can see that and maybe go in with some greens. So yeah, if you're having a lazy night or you feel like something delicious, but don't want to do a lot of work, there you go. <laughs> or if you, if you want to make that recipe and mm. someone that is coming to dinner doesn't like fish, you've got another option there as well too. So um, exactly. just try to be inclusive for everybody. Everyone. And you can <laughs> skip the fish sauce just to make sure that there's no absolutely no fish in this if they don't like fish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here you go. You've got some beautiful um, noodles that are ready. And maybe if you want, you don't have to, some chilies to go on top. And it's a noodle salad, basically. And so is that vegan? This would be vegan if I did not use fish sauce. Yeah. Um, but nothing else. It, it would be entirely vegan except for the fish sauce. Yeah. So yeah, you could admit the fish sauce and then you've got your vegan option for for your dinner party. So that's it. And um, if and you can always use gluten-free noodles as well. So these ones have gluten in them, uh, because they're egg noodles they made with wheat. Uh, but you can find gluten-free versions of that these days if you've got that allergy allergy to deal with as well. Um, but yeah. That's it in terms of the noodles. We can quickly do a little bit of plating here. And it looks- We've got two minutes on the fish, yeah. It looks understated, but like kind of elegant and just little pops of color in it, which makes it very, mm. um, very nice looking and very simple. Yeah, look, um, I think it is, it is really simple um, in terms of how we've prepared it, but it's actually full of flavor because of all the things that we just put into the um, into the the sauce. It's just absolutely punchy with beautiful, delicious, amazing flavor. <laughs> we can go in with some of that garlic and ginger on top. Nice little onion. Whoop. That guy so was did not that meant to ginger escape. crisp up in the oil? Yeah, it, it did. Kind absolutely. Of crispy? Yeah, so it's gone from being raw ginger, which not many people like to eat, uh, to absolutely um, crunchy. So let me show, try and grab a small piece in here and show you. So that's one of him. That's another one of him. So it's gone from white and crunchy to caramelized and golden. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Can you see that? That's the oh, ginger yeah, that's pieces. Better. Yeah. So yeah, so it, it was, as you saw before, matchstick size. Now it's wilted down, it's golden. 
if I fried it for any longer, it would have burnt. So you do need to keep an eye on the oil because the oil gets quite hot. But yeah, it becomes to eat this now is, is actually quite nice. It's a little bit crunchy um, in, in, in not a juicy kind of way, but in a fried kind of way, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna just use this little plate to grab one guy out so we can open him up and see him on the inside. Now, I'm guessing that you approach opening these parcels with a little bit of caution. Well, they need to sit for a few minutes. So that's uh, one point, just to kind of ease off a little bit in terms of the heat. And then once that's happened, so you can still, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's steam coming off of it. Uh, so we're just gonna let that sit for just a minute. I wanna open them really carefully because there's really good, delicious fish broth in there that I wanna go on the noodles. So I don't want that to spill all over. So we'll give them just a minute or so. Uh, and um, we can put them on top of the fish on the side to go with. Whilst we wait for that to cool, let me quickly come at you with the garnish that I'll be using today. So if I just put him away for a second. So we've got a couple of things that we'll be using today. So we've got not your favorite, Kathy, but coriander. Um, so skip it if you don't like it. Um, then you've got, these are fried shallots. So you can get these in Asian grocers if you don't want to make it yourself. You can all, always make it yourself. They're basically uh, red shallots that are fried in oil. And so they become really crunchy. Um, so they add a different texture and a different flavor to the fish, uh, given the fish is quite clean and steamed. Coriander obviously adds flavor in terms of the fragrance and spring onions. So these are the curly spring onions that I mentioned. In the video will show you how to make them, but having soaked them in ice water makes them less pungent, which is great because sometimes if you add that to a noodle salad like before, it can be quite strong and some people don't necessarily like that. So soaking them in ice water takes that away, actually leaches it out and the ice actually makes it curl and also uh, makes it really crunchy. So um, they go great on top of fish. Uh, but those are the three things I'm using today, uh, along with, if you want more chili, fresh cut chilies as well. So I'm gonna list these guys off to the side and we can quickly open this guy up and see what we've got on the inside. Hopefully it's cooked all the way, otherwise it goes back in the oven. Um, but I've left it in there for 18 minutes. So I think we should be just fine. So here we go. I'm gonna go put it this way. It smells really good. I really did a, quite a knot there. It doesn't want to open back up. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, it's, it's steaming away and I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a little bit of liquid, maybe if I flipped it around this way, uh, that's kind of just collecting around there. And so that chili is kind of wilted down now. So if, if, you know, it was probably a bit punchy going in, it's now kind of mellowed out. The fish is completely cooked. The vegetables completely cooked underneath it as well. So these guys have gone from dark green to a much brighter green. So that means it's completely cooked all the way in. So that's ready to, to add in terms of, what I'll do is I'll move it over into this plate with all the beautiful juices as elegantly as I can. And then we're gonna do the garnish on top. And then we've got, well, I have lunch. <laughs> you guys have a recipe that you can probably try for lunch another day. So there you go. So I'll do this first and then I'll do the sauce um, that we made before on top of it. Um, but I'm gonna just as delicately as I can, so you guys can see it, just kind of lift him up and put him on there. And so now it just gets to very, very nicely, hopefully <laughs> come off into, whoop, I should probably do it that way so you guys can see it. So I'm just lifting it off and sliding the baking paper out from underneath it. There we go. Put the fish that away. looks so delicate. Mm, it, it, really, it really is. So I'm just gonna grab my chopsticks and see if I can move them up a little bit and have them sit. Now, once the piece sit on top, so if you're into presentation and you wanna impress your guests, you can always do it like that. Oop. 
have it sit that way, pull this guy out and have him sit just on the corner over there, wrapped around. Now we can do a couple of things. We can do, we can start with this guy just to go around the corners like that. Then we can kind of have some of the coriander springs on either side. And then we can have our, let me just go in with some of the sauce. Not too much, but just a wee bit on the top. A little bit of ginger. That fried ginger look. Doesn't want to come out, there we go. And some spring onions. Lunch, Oop, too far down, there we go. 